Hi everyone, so I thought today I'll make a bit of a different video and um, basically I thought of how to break down um, things that inspire me and share that with you. So sometimes I feel like I have done and finished a project or I have started a new style and it is um, I'm over it and I need to source that inspiration from somewhere to come up with something new and um, essentially breaking it down into three groups I realized that there are art books there are magazines and photography so um, to start with the easiest and the simplest is when I go um, like in parks and gardens um, or in my own garden or I buy flowers for the house I like to take pictures so this is this was printed on the yeah, so this is the Canon Selfie CB1200. It's the one with the Wi-Fi connection. And that's how I basically kind of just take pictures of certain flowers that I like. Or it could be anything else. In this case, it is flowers, as you can see. But it could be something like um, fabrics or textures. Um, something interesting that catches my eye and then later on I could look at these pictures and either use them in a collage in a journal um, or I could kind of look at the colors and be inspired by the colors or just want to draw what I see or something imaginative but inspired by the shapes of the leaves and the petals there's just um an abundance of inspiration you can take from something as simple as having a little walk and taking a picture of uh, something that you find interesting and the reason I will be mentioning predominantly fashion and flowers is because those two are the most that I'm interested in but if you are interested in architecture just translate that into your own interest basically so that's the photography um, and having a printer which is quite small and portable on your desk is quite um let me just pull this out because I wanted to show you Okay, so here it is. Here is this. Um, you see how small it is. It's very, very cute. And for printing, you basically insert a little tray here. And then on the side, you've got the ink cassette um, compartment. And then you just flip the screen and you're ready to print. So you could print from your phone, um, through Wi-Fi, through cable, um, USB cable. You could download certain images on computer and then print it that way. You can do so much, but be prepared that it's not going to be like amazing best printing quality this is not what this is for this is actually a portable um, printer which takes literally no space at all on my desk and I actually tend to stack a few things on top and um, whenever I need it I just kind of use it and that's what it's designed for but the quality is good enough you can see it's it's um, it's not bad compared to some of the other smaller um, printers and yeah it's it's kind of like in the middle of like a pocket printer um, and a proper big um, printer which I actually need to invest into um, so that's about photography now let's talk about fashion so uh, to me, this is fashion. This is fashion and beauty. Um, something I was interested in for years and years is the beauty industry, how the makeup is applied, how, you know, it, and that knowledge stuck with me, which I like to take into my illustrations and then, you know, just kind of work on it, work on the colors, work on the look 
um, of the of the face, etc. So that's that. And the obviously the fashion is the lines and the parts of the dresses. I don't like spending too much time on um, on the illustrating of the dress. To me, it's the the face, the neck, and the kind of the body part. The, the is what I like to illustrate and that comes um, from from fashion magazines so I have this little journal which I actually haven't worked in for a long time but if you're interested there are a few um, process videos that I have recorded they are on my channel but they're one of the older videos so just go um, back 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 and then you will see so this is just um, like a regular kind of notebook that I picked up at TK Maxx, I think, or it might have been HomeSense, but it's basically the same thing for um, for stuff. And here I used to, and I need to go back to it, basically would keep ideas about fashion. So little clippings from the fashion magazines, um, you know, what's kind of in trend, not necessarily right now, you know, this isn't what this is about, but something that I would like, something that I could use as an idea in my illustration. So this is where I would get ideas. So I would put down things that I see uh, in a creative way down. So it's not just a boring kind of um, cut out of the magazine, but I actually would incorporate it into... Um, a layout really and then from here I could then take further inspiration and you know draw something or paint something so I quite like this this is very satisfying all you need is a pair of scissors some you know glue um, cool looking uh, washi tape and you are good to go so so that's what I do here. Let's see, last entry was this one, which is quite also inspiring. It's like a collage that I did with um, different things. There's some stickers. There is some um, of these lovely kind of plasticky um, embellishments or ephemera and yes, yeah, stamping. There is some scrapbooking paper obviously a collage out of a magazine and then just a random clipping from something I did which I like the colors of and it kind of works really well here as you can see so that is how I like to um, incorporate sort of my fashion love with um, journaling and like I said I should do more of it Now, coming to magazines, as I just spoke about fashion, obviously Vogue is going to be my most favorite magazine. And actually, I was subscribed for a year and um, I have still a lot of magazines that are sitting in their envelopes because I haven't had time to open. So there is, you know, again, an abundance of inspiration I can take from, from these beautiful magazines there are like piece of piece of art really the covers are stunning most of the time and then um when you look inside the you know obviously the fashion shoots and the runways everything is is very much inspiring and then they have this amazing photography which I wanted to share with you of, it could be anything, it could be like, um, you know, jewellery. They have stunning jewellery shoots. So that they you can again look at the textures of the fabric, the flowers, um, or just, you know, you could try and attempt painting this flower. It's, it's just stunning, look at this. So there's loads and loads to be inspired by. And of course, those collages that they do, um, different textures, colors, it just, it kind of really, it's, it's really, to me, it's quite inspiring. You can see this one is a tiered off kind of watercolor paper that they used. Um, it's pretty much like art, but fashion, fashion, but art, you know, it's all very um, blended and uh, compressed into one which is the the Vogue magazine so 
that's my favorite fashion magazine which I take a lot of inspiration from for face and fashion illustrations then for in terms of like you know anything related to art it could be scrapbooking it could be journaling it could be painting um Daphne's diary definitely is a pretty cool magazine to have and I'm not subscribed but I have considered subscribing because I tend to miss on the next um um issue so they they don't they don't come I think every month I think they come either every two or three months and I tend to just forget about it and that way I miss out on a lot but so whenever I would see one I would buy and just to give you an idea again it's a collection of really interesting things and Daphne does a great job of writing as well so she travels quite a bit and um, just gives you some like here's expensive tulips she would give you a little history about things and um, art obviously anything that's cool looking or interesting looking she'll try to include in her magazine so this is the artist here um, Michael I'm trying to find his name it just says Michael everywhere um, anyway, so that's quite interesting. You know, you could, for example, cut this out, stick it into your um, journal, put some gesso and just go wild with it. You could create so many nice pieces. So her magazine is fantastic for not just looking at, but actually working with. There is loads of lovely photography that you could cut out and work with. Apart from that, she always has some nice... Um, projects that you can use so in this particular piece there is this one which is it's a cutout what is this paper lantern so you could create something like that great for kids if you have kids or if you just like creating um, by yourself you know for anyone in your family like a little gift loads and loads of ideas and then on the cover so you can see for example here there is this thing I can take off, like a little card. Um, and then the, I just got a few here. I just wanted to show you. So here is a little rose. So she tries to put these things. And again, how simple is it just to stick it into your journal and use it up that way. So there is another great one. There is also recipes, a bit of fashion as well. Like I said, it could be anything and everything. And the most important thing is that her photography are stunning so yeah look at this like little stickers there's always a bunch and bunch of things you'll never get bored with her magazines um look at this one so this is i think from the summer oh this is 2015 so this is quite old but very pretty um apart from all these delicious colors that are just gorgeous turquoise yellow and pink what else do you need um, there's also this little strawberry that you can use in, in your journal again. So absolutely love them. Okay, and then finally, the, the final thing that I want to mention is this uh, super old um, art book that I have. I had this book, I think, gifted to me when I was still going to college. So this is super old. <laughs> um, but I love uh, sourcing inspiration from here because it's just endless you can go um, right back to the beginning of the universe and the art with it and then it goes uh, back to the modern day so all of the most important pieces uh, of art predominantly paintings it could be sculptures as well, it could be photography, but mostly paintings will be in this book. And it's a great way if you are not familiar and would like to learn a little bit more about history of art, or if you already know about these painters and artists and their paintings, then just to remind yourself um, how incredibly talented they are. And again, be inspired by their art. So... It starts here so this is probably one of the you know history's first um, piece of art that was recorded 
and then it goes back or not back but rather um, actually there is one picture which I'm not sure I can show so let me just uh, hide that it's by Lucien Freud so you can imagine it's a little bit uh, revealing so this is the last one 1991 and it's by Rachel Witterit I think so let me just show you a few um, so here are some classic pieces obviously from you know 1638 um, so that is pretty impressive um, and then the um, it explains a little bit about the painting or the artist itself so it's quite great to read about that as well and yeah this um, this is gorgeous piece Dante Gabriel Rossetti I have um, a postcard of this painting beautiful it's just stunningly done 1880 and let's see all of these sticky notes I have are from long long time ago um, so these roses are gorgeous let's see obviously Monet and his stunning uh, lilies water lilies Gustav Klimt Van Gogh so Paul Cezanne love the colors love the textures I was quite inspired by how um Sing Signac, uh, Paul Sig Signac. <laughs> Sorry if I mispronounce. I actually don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, yeah, how he would paint in these kind of little brush strokes. So he would mix up, you know, different color for every brush stroke, basically. And it must have been a lot of hard work to create a painting like this. It looks like mosaic from a distance. And then, obviously. Franz Marc, I, I have mentioned his horses paintings in my um, old sketchbook flip throughs. Here we're getting on to the more modern stuff. So 1912, 1913. Here is a painting by Frida Kahlo I wanted to show you. Um, her fantastic choice of bright colors. And what else do we have here? Yeah, just more kind of Damien Hurst, obviously. Um, David Hockney, Andy Warhol. Oh yeah, so this was the Andy Andy Goldsworthy, who I was pretty much inspired by during my college years. Um, so he's he's a very interesting artist, worth checking out if you haven't heard of him. Um, if you love nature, you might you might find it quite interesting. It's sort of like a modern way of looking at nature. Um, he creates sculptures out of everything related to you know trees, leaves, water, stones, anything, sand even. Um, and next to it is um, Jeff Koons, which I thought is quite actually funny because I remember um, in one of the latest Kardashian episodes please don't uh, unsubscribe to me if I mentioned that I like watching Kardashians it's my um, guilty pleasure where I, I like to switch off my brain and just watch <laughs> so anyway uh, where Chris their mother is um, art shaming Chloe um, that she didn't know that it was Jeff Koons sculpture in her office and yeah it was um fun to to kind of see his his work right next to Andy Goldsworthy very different um, but very much fun so that's it really um look at this one how incredibly detailed this is so yeah I'm not sure why it kind of jumps um so this is 1988 and then we have 1929 I think it might be separated into uh, like subgroups so this is modern realist and the one before was pop art so they probably start with the earliest pop art uh, finishing with the latest and then you start yeah that must be it 
a modern realist would be 1929. Going back to uh, the latest, which would be that Lucy and Freud, which I can't show you. 1978. Okay, so that makes sense now. All right, so if this book is still available to buy because it's super ancient, I feel, uh, I will leave the link below as always so you can have a look. But um, yeah, I'm actually interested in buying more um, art books, not necessarily kind of going so much back to, you know, before century, but um, kind of just having mixed artists and their work there there were there was a fantastic library at um, the college where i studied um, art and i wish i would have taken down the names of some of those books because they were just mind-blowing you would open a book and you could literally sit there for hours mesmerized by all the artists um work there so yeah so this is what um i use to get my inspiration from and i hope you found it useful and thanks for watching and see you soon